Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Birch Press Designs, um, and we're going to focus on this stamp set. It's very different. I love the mosaic look. It is called Pumpkin Lace Work. Um, there are die sets, or there is a die set that's also available um, that covers the pumpkin shape, um, the top, and the larger of the images. So these small ones here, it it's, does not have the dies for those, and it also has a die for these as well. Um, but I'm going to focus on this stamp. Now, what I'm going to also show today... <clears throat> excuse me, is kind of a, a monochrome um, coloring. I'm going to be using my colored pencils, so I've pulled out some colors. You can see them here with my polychromos. Um, so I have a very dark blue, indigo. Um, I've got two shades of purple, two shades of a warm gray, and two shades of a maroon. So we're going to be using that. I've already masked out this image, so I have that all ready to go as well. The paper that I'm going to use is my Strathmore uh, Toned Tanned Mixed Media. Now, there is a toned tan in regular for colored pencils, and it is great. The thing is, it is very thin. Um, it, it's got weight to it, but I mean, it's not like a cardstock. So if I do this, you can really hear that. Um, it really bounces back. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is 184 pounds. Um, and I always get the six by eight because I can cut it in half. So I have a four by six sheet. That's perfect. So um, this also comes in a toned blue and a toned gray, but this is my paper of choice when it comes to my colored pencils. I do enjoy a uh, paper to have tooth. I want it to have a lot of tooth. So I'll even use cold press watercolor paper, br uh, Bristol paper. Um, I really enjoy the Arteza watercolor paper because it is extremely textured. I like that look. Um, it just, I, I, I just gravitate to it. Um, I know that there's papers out there specifically for colored pencil. I like them, but I just like these better. So again, personal choice. I really don't like using my colored pencils on cardstock. I think it's too slick, um, of a surface, especially the Nina, um, I will very rarely use my colored pencils on a Nina cardstock <clears throat> because it, it the, the surface is just too slick. I can't get the um, the blend that I want. I've got to put a lot of pressure right off the bat um, to get my pigment down where this I can keep on building and building and building and building. So I am going to show all of the coloring Again, just changing your colors is going to give your image a different look. So while pumpkins we see for fall, we also see them for Halloween, but we also see orange. So when it comes to Halloween, my colors, I love the purple. I love the black. I love the lime green, uh, the blood reds. You can tell how I'm describing them. So you can see, I'm going to turn this into a Halloween, and you can see there is a sentiment there that says, Happy Halloween. And that's what we're going to do. So these are not, this is not going to be colored in a traditional way. We're going to kind of really make it different. I'm going to pull out my stamp positioning tool. And I'm going to get my image stamped. Now, my focal point is going to be, of course, this pumpkin. And I am going to stamp it three times. Because remember, I do like odd numbers. I do like to also have it be a set of three. Not quite sure which way I want to go with this. And I think I'm going to go this way. 
So I'm going to do, as I said, some masking. So when you do masking, you want to make sure that <clears throat> whatever you want to the front is first. You stamp that first. So believe it or not, I actually want my top to be first. So I'm going to get that set in place. I'm going to move that. And the ink that I'm going to use is Mushroom from the Concord and Ninth um, dye ink that they recently released. This is like a, a gray brown. I didn't want black. Now that's going to dry back. Um, but I didn't want this harsh line. Now I'm going to put my mask down because now I'm going to stamp the main area. Now this could take me forever to get this separated. I'm just saying, just a fair warning. Oh, I forgot my notice. Long video, gabbing. Sometimes people don't enjoy that or don't appreciate it. And that's fine. You don't have to, but just giving you a fair warning. All right, so I've got that covered. Now I'm going to come in with my image. And you can see it's going to go over the stem because I want that stem to come down. All right, I'm going to move that off to the side. As a matter of fact, I'll move that over there. I'm going to pick that up, make sure that's pushed up. And again, I'm going to stamp my image. Now, remember, these are not felt pads for the Concord and Ninth. They are the spongy. Um, uh, they're like the stamp it up pads or I believe the Catherine Pullers. I've never used Catherine Puller um, but from what I see in the videos they are very similar. So you don't have to push as hard. All right so that that's my image. <laughs> so I'm going to lift this up and you can see now I have that topper that is sitting perfectly where I want it. So now what I want to do is I want to put down my main pumpkin. So I'm going to set this in place because I am going to stamp two others. I'm actually going to focus in on this side for right now. Now, when I place a mask, I like to see part of my line. Now, I'm also going to pull in one of my magnets here because I want that to stay. I am going to make sure that that is clean. And I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. And I want it grouped. So again, I'm going to set that, but again, I need to make sure that my topper is in place first. So I'm going to lift that and I'm going to put that down right there. And I'm going to pick that up. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to do that two more times. So stamp. I'm going to set down my mask. I'm going to make sure I clean this this time. <laughs> Always make sure you clean your stamps. I am horrible at that. <laughs> I'm going to set this down. Same thing. We're going to lift it up. I'm 
press down. I want to make sure that I get a good impression. Now I'm going to slide this over into the corner because now I want to go to this side. So again, I'm going to lift that up. I'm going to keep my mask in place. I can see my black line, so I am good with that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I want to clean off my stamp. And I want to set this in place. And I want to look for the top. You get the gist. And I'm going to set that down. Now, the masking paper that I am using is by Simon Says. It is my favorite masking paper. Um, I, I just like, it's it's easy to, to pick up. Now, remember, with all masking papers, you can see I'm starting to get a dark line there. And I'm okay with that. I, I am taking the chance that this is going to come through. And bleed through that and if it does it does we'll figure it out um, you can also use post-its I have used and I have used the full sheet you know the all coverage post-its or the ones that just have it on the top as well they work just as fine all right so let's see what we have here Lift that up. Let me clean my stamp. Get those away because I was doing videos yesterday and oh my, so, so losing <laughs> stamps. I literally lost the stamp. I have no idea where the stamp is. I don't know how I do that. Well, I know how I do it, but it, it, it's, it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, so now that that's away, I'm going to come in and just lift this off. And you can see we have all of these pumpkins now going across the front. Big focal image. Um, what I like to do with my masks, because you all know if you've seen my um, videos before I, I am not a fussy cutter so I'll just put these back here there is like a sheen on this paper and I can hold them there all right so what I'm gonna do is very this is very monochrome or monochrome sorry now Mono is two. All right. So basically, I'm not using the oranges. I'm just simply changing the colors of this image to give it a different look. So when it comes to this, the pumpkin itself is going to be in the purples. These details in the center here are going to be done in the red and the gray. The toppers are going to be in the gray. These back here are going to be done in the gray. So this is going to be become the focal point by me putting the purple on this. And these are going to get pushed to the background because of the colors that I'm using. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to a voiceover because I do speed this up because I do want you to see all of the coloring. And at the end, I will let you know how long it took me to color this image. I'll also zoom up. All right, be back soon. Okay, and here we are with the voiceover. So I have really sped this up. All of the coloring is here. So you can see I've chosen very different colors. 
Um, again, like I said before, when I think of Halloween, um, purple, green, like it's got to be a lime green, uh, bright oranges, grays, blacks, of course, they all come um, first in my mind. So when I saw this, I love the design with it. I love the geometric feel to it. But we can take any image and make it what we want. So again, pumpkin is fall, but like I said before, we think of orange. Why not make it pump purple? Why not grunge it down, so to speak, but still be beautiful? And that's what I'm doing here. So when it comes to the main image, the front, that's our focal piece. Even though I've got three going on here, I want this one to come off the page. So using a light purple, I've colored in the entire area. Now I'm going to go a little bit heavier in hand, put a little bit more pressure to start adding in my shadow. The beauty of colored pencils, and if you've seen my videos before, I always say it, and I'm sure I said it in this one as well, colored pencils are my medium of choice. Um, I do enjoy them. Um, not that I don't enjoy the other ones, but I just really gravitate to the colored pencils. From one colored pencil, you can have a huge spectrum of colors. A lot of us, we suffer from, I must have every color. I am guilty of that, very much so. But I cannot stress enough, you do not need the full sets for colored pencils. Okay, you can get the set of 12 or 24 or maybe 36 um, to, to get yourself comfortable with them. They do blend. You can mix your colors to get other colors. I'm coming in now with a slightly darker. After I've got the basis of that shade started, now I'm going to come in with my next purple, my next darkest color. And I'm really putting those shadows along the side towards the bottom. And I will keep building on this. Again, I'm still not putting a heavy hand. I don't want the tooth of the paper to fill up with the pigment. Now, remember, these are Faber-Castells, so these are oil-based. Whether they're oil-based or whether they're wax-based. And again... All of these statements are my own <laughs> because I am not a color pencilist or artist pencilist. Where did that come from? I just, I don't use the correct terms. I know by what I've done. When you fill in your paper and when you've filled in all of that tooth, what happens is you can't add any more color and you get this film, a very shiny film. Some call it blooming, um, actually, when it comes to this. It's, it's bloomed. It's, it's done. It's not going to take any more color. So always with a light hand am I using my colored pencils because I always want the opportunity to continue to add color because I'm going to see an area that I need to add more shading to or I want to pull out the shading, so I've got to pull all those colors out. My ultimate, <laughs> excuse me, my ultimate darkest shade for this will be dark indigo blue. When it comes to, and I will use a term that I've learned from another, the scary dark, it doesn't necessarily have to be within this color family. It doesn't have to be, and I never usually do choose that same color. So if I'm doing a leaf, if I want that scary dark, I'll come in with a black or the dark indigo. If I want a scary dark for reds, I'll come in with a brown or also that dark indigo or black. When it comes to purples, I will come in with the dark indigo or the black. Those shades, they add that final touch and that deepest of the shades. It highlights that piece. So don't be scared to get outside of that color. You don't have to have a light, a medium, and a dark of the same shade. 
To get a red blend, you start, I like to start out with an orangey red, and then I go into a red, and then I'll go into the deepest of the red, and then I pull in that scary color to get those tones. So it's kind of the same when it comes to all of our other mediums. But don't be afraid to pull that out. I am a huge fan of the indigo, the darkest blue. It goes for everything, of, except, of course, your yellows. That I would pull in a brown. All right, same thing with your oranges. I would pull in a brown or a red for that one. So you can see that I've, after I've been gabbing here about my colors, what I'm coming in now, when it comes to these center pieces, I came down with a light gray and it's a warm gray. And now I'm coming in with a really dark, uh, it's almost like a mahogany. And I'm adding color to that. Again, gray and mahogany. But you can see they blend beautifully. As long as you take that one color and just completely fill that area, you can get your blends. For these other, where it looks like it's a flower, I'm just laying down a little bit of shading between the two grays and a little bit of what's called, I believe this is magenta. And I'm just putting that in the corners as well. Again, leaving that center strip to be the lightest. So you can see the, the tops of the, of the pumpkin, I used my grays and my indigo to give that shading. I don't worry about the light shores, as I can't speak. Um, if I do, it's usually coming in from my right side, coming down to the left. Um, but you can tell my light source is kind of all over the place when it comes to this, or it's head on. When it comes to the two that are in the back, the two pumpkins sitting in the back of this piece, I am pulling in the two warm grays, I have a light and a dark, and I'm going to use the indigo. So again, I'm going to do the same thing for the pumpkin itself that I did with the purple. But it, that's all I'm going to worry about. I'm not going to worry about the motifs in the center of this. I just want it to have a faint bit of shading. Because um, again, I want that center one to pop off. I want that center one to be our focal point. Even if I chose one of the ones in the back, okay, off to the side, if I did that one in the purple, that would have become my focal point. Because again, those colors, your eyes are immediately going to get drawn into the most colorful, the, the, the one thing that your eye is going to pull in for. So again, these are just the ways that I look at colored pencils, um, the way that I manipulate the colors and to, to have them. I will never profess that I am an artiste. I will never profess that I am an expert when it comes to colored pencils. Um, I am very interested in taking a course on it so that, you know, maybe when I speak, I'm <laughs> I can speak more intelligently um, because, again, I don't want to, I do this for card making. I also do this in my coloring books. Um, I don't do portraits. I don't do landscapes. So there's always something that's down first that I'm coloring in. Uh, when I use my colored pencils, and that's the best way that I can explain that. Um, but I don't want to um, take anything away from color pencil artists. It's I watch a couple of them, and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so that was the coloring. And you can see, I didn't do too much to the ones that are to the back, to the signs, because I want this one to stick out. Now, what I did was I did add some gems. Nobody needed to watch me, you know, glue these spots. But where this design was, I added some iridescent black pearls. Um, now, unfortunately, these were given to me. I'm not quite sure what they are. They look like the buttons galore ones, but I'll see if there's ones similar to it um, to link to. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So, 
you can see that I always do add, I try to ground my pieces. So this is just using um, three alcohol markers in warm shades, um, five, three, and one. Um, and then you can see I have this faint shadow that comes off. I like because it helps to pop them off of the page. So different look, but again, it's another way to stretch your stamp. Again, we, we tend to, and, and I do this as well, you know, you think of a pumpkin, you think orange. Why can't a pumpkin be purple? Why can't a pumpkin can be green? Why, why can't we make them other colors? Um, we, that's the beauty of being creative. That's the beauty of creating what you want to create um, when it comes to this. And this concept of colored pencils, and again, I am not a colored pencil artist. Um, I kind of do my own thing. Colored pencils are my medium of choice. I do enjoy them. I am more comfortable with them. Um, and I do like blending with them. But again, it's it can give you that range to make this item just pop off the page. So to finish the card, what I want to do is I want to grab some black soot. So excuse me for my stretching if you see this. And I want to grab my distress ink in black soot, not the um, distress oxide. Yes, I know the vintage photo is not coming in, but I just want to add a little bit of haze. Now you can also do this with your colored pencils as well. Um, but you can see, I really, I come in on a 90 degree angle just to fill in. And now I'll come in and just add a little bit more. You can use your blending brushes if you have that. I like to go in heavier on the corners. Again, it just helps to frame the piece for me. So yes, I do use it like the vintage photo. Yes, I know. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to glue it onto my backdrop. Now, since I do have, again, I used a, um, a charcoal brown to stamp. So it was just a softer shade. I am going to use a black cardstock for my mat. I do like just to have a slight mat in the background sometimes, because again, I think it just boom, brings it right forward, which then allows me to use any base that I want when I cover the entire front. I'm going to glue this down as well. I'm going to lay that down in the corner and then I quick tip it up and wrap my fingers around it to get that on there evenly. So when somebody gets this, again, you can't tell. You've got ways to write. Um, and so forth. So, and here's our sentiment. I just stamped it on the same paper here and I used my VersaFine Black and then I went over it with my Jet Black Nouveau Detail Embossing Powder um, and I heat set that. So, of course, I am going to prop this up using some double-sided foam squares and wow do i have ink all over my fingers yes the things we notice <laughs> and of course i am release paper challenged so now to decide where i want to put this now i'm not quite sure you know a lot of times we think Oh, well, let's just put it up there um, because it's an open spot. I kind of like it down here. It will stick out um, by all means. And let me pull that up so you can see it. You know, if I put it up here, it kind of continues and throws. For me, it looks like it throws the um, piece off. So I am going to set it right down here. And you know what? Before I do... 
Yeah, you all knew that I was going to come in with the black soot around this. I'm just saying. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to place this right down on the corner, and I'm going to line it up to the side of my card. And I'm going to push down. And that there is our card. Again, very different, non-traditional, just using different colors. Um, and again, this is the pumpin, pumpkin <laughs> lace work card. Um, this says it just has so many possibilities. I mean, these leaves, again, you could gold emboss these leaves down and then watercolor on top of them do that on bristol or watercolor paper and then just let that gold embossing coming through let them dry and then there's dyes for all of them so just have fun it would have been pretty you know just lining up underneath there um so again so many choices always look at what you have or this stamp set and change it use a different color um, use a, a a different setting you know this is Yes, it's supposed to be a pumpkin, but couldn't it be a ball of some type? Could it be something else? Um, we can make things whatever we want. So I do hope you enjoyed this. I hope I gave you some tips and tricks when it comes to doing something like this with your colored pencils. Um, same process on watercolor pencils as well. Um, as always, the products that I used will be listed down below. In the video description and if you have a question leave that down there as well and I will get back to you as soon as I can um, if you haven't already I'd love for you to subscribe um, I try to do a minimum of three videos a week um, sometimes you know life unfortunately though gets in the way but always hopefully the videos are teaching you something giving you a tip or a trick of some sort enjoy your day Continue to stay safe and healthy, but remember what is most important for me and do it at least a little bit each day. And it doesn't matter what it is. You don't have to do this. It could be something completely different. Do something for yourself because then this way you're always being creative. Take care, everyone. Until next time.